welcome to the Lincolnshire Buzzcast, a podcast that covers everything Lincolnshire, as well as talking to some fantastic people who are doing some fantastic things in the county. I'm Lizzie. And I'm Hannah. And I'm Will. Hello and welcome to episode 19, 19 of the Lincolnshire Buzzcast. It's exciting, we're nearly at 20. (laughs) 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 Didn't know that was a milestone, but it is now. Um, we've got lots of jam-packed in for today. Um, we uh, want to talk about uh, the anniversary of the women's football ban because that is today, as you'll be hearing this. Obviously, we're not recording this live, but um, because that would be a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> takes a lot of editing to get to this point. So, if you're listening to this and thinking, "Oh my gosh, what are they talking about?" Like, just just imagine what it was like before I. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, we want to talk about the women's football ban. Um, we want to talk a little bit about our Christmas video that we launched. If you haven't seen it yet, do check that out. But we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Um, I've got some local news. You've got Hannah, some ex- fitness fans, fitness fans, yes, and, and well-being. Will is sticking to his name. <laughs> I've got some tips coming on the way. So yeah, listen <laughs> out. <laughs> get us through those horrible cold <laughs> wintry evenings fabulous so without further ado let's jump into the ban i know such a bad thing such a bad thing that happened and such an epic sort of onslaught of of catastrophe that came afterwards i suppose that that's affected us when i say us i'm talking females in sport not just football but females in sport and that attitude that people have towards females in sport and and maybe that we're not where we should be Exactly. So lots of people don't actually know the ban actually happened. So I'm going to, for anyone who's listened to this and is a bit maybe nonplussed about what on earth yeah. we're talking about, we'll, um, I'll give you a, a really whistle-stop pos- <laughs> potted history tour. Um, I've got this fresh in my mind because we, uh, myself and uh, Amy, are going around the, the Lincolnshire schools and delivering um, this history lesson to all our girl residents of Lincolnshire. So they, sh- they should all, well, not all, but we're working our way around. So sooner or later, if you've got a girl that goes to a school in Lincolnshire, they should hopefully know at some point what's going on. <laughs> um, so what happened uh, is 100 years ago to the day today, as this comes out, women's yeah, football, football was banned by the uh, Lincolnshire break times, and then they, they So they, women's football, they expanded in World it War One, um, more official, became, they were really popular. Big charity matches, the, what, to the point that it actually got more popular than the men's game had ever been. Um, to the point that in on a 1920 Boxing Day football match, Dick Kerr ladies, who was the, one of the probably more famous ones of the team, attracted 53,000 people to watch their game with 14,000 still trying to get in. So they were a sort of a big deal with those yeah. numbers. Um, however, because the war had ended and the gov- and people were trying to get the women to take their proper place in yeah, society, no. said with actual air con, um, <laughs> and the government had decided that, that they originally were saying that it was really good for pe- women's well-being that they were doing this, but now they were trying to get everyone to go back. They were saying, actually, football was not good for our delicate frames. <laughs> we couldn't possibly cope with playing a football match. We might break. Um, <laughs> um, and women, as you know, as, as a fantastic fantastic race that we are said <laughs> uh, ignored that <laughs> so um in the 15th the 5th of december 1921 the fa banned women's football so they called on all football grounds to refuse entry to women now some people still tried to carry on and play it at different areas but it just it didn't wasn't quite the same there wasn't playing at the stadiums it was really difficult to carry on so women's football did dwindle and I think the most interesting fact in this whole bit is that that ban wasn't lifted until 50 years later in 1971 yeah like that is not that long ago you think that actually well it is to will (laughs) (laughs) because he thinks 2018 (laughs) when I graduated yeah (laughs) all those years ago (laughs) for me and you that was what 17 years before we were born yeah roughly yeah it's crazy so yeah. you think actually that we, we live in a modern day society where loads of stuff has changed and, and people are more free with things and, and lots of people have more rights I mean there's still ways to go but we still you know women had has had way more rights in 1971 yeah, you know, yeah. it had come a lot equality had come a, a much further away from the from the time of suffra- suffragettes and things like that so the fact that that ban wasn't list- lifted till 1971 blows my mind yeah same here as well like i can't believe that there's there's such an equality like and it's taken so long to actually 
build the bridge. Do you know what I mean? Between males and females. Like females are good footballers as well. Like yeah. people don't realise. Like yeah, England yeah. football team when they won twenty nil the other night. It's <laughs> love you. Like I know there's probably yeah, like I mean, a, there's probably a bit of a divide, like a bit of a. Um, there is, a bit, but, ability, that is, but still absolutely, good. but that is because not. I mean, even though it's we've been uh, we so that that ban that impact of not being there for fifty years has meant that mm. um, the men's game has as 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 thrived, while as women are now playing a hundred years of catch up. Um, yeah. So that our England team, I've only still the biggest crowd to date is forty three thousand, so it's still nowhere near like what it was yeah. in, in back in the nineteen twenties, but. Um, there are other teams, so like Lapley and things like that, that actually they've, you know, they've only just started really going. Yeah. Like they don't have yeah. that kind of stuff. So they're even further behind. So there are huge gaps in the women's football games when they play a, like a, on a global stage mm. because we're still ahead of some countries. However, we, when we've been doing this talk around Lincolnshire schools and we always ask them, we put the, we put the, the, the picture of the men's team up and ask them to put their hands up if they know every yeah. single player in that squad and most of them put their hands up we do the same for the England women's team none not in some places no. some the old one but none so like that's so we still have so far to go because yeah. actually how are we expecting our girls to, to dream and to want to do sport and look at sport as a career if there aren't any media there aren't any role models in the media yeah. for them because they, they they still don't get the same yeah. you know they're, they're not advertising Nivea no <laughs> I agree. No, I agree. Like they've only just started televising um, women's football league as well, like on TV. But that's it's only on Sky. So if you don't have Sky, obviously you can't watch it. So yeah. the only uh, publicity is on BBC, but that's England football team. So rather than the yeah, yeah. women's Super League, so. The little boys are growing up thinking I want to be it's the hard. next Harry Kane, that kind of thing, because yeah, yeah. he's everywhere. Like, you know, rightly so, he's our mm. captain. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, girls probably can't even name yeah. our England any captain. Team. Yeah, yeah. N- yeah. yeah like, no, any of the rest of the team. We are, have made some changes, though. So there is Alex Scott, who's a, who's a football pundit, not yeah. just for the England game, yeah. for the women's game, for all games. Yeah. And there are, um, there are women's pundits and stuff um, across the board now aren't they like yeah. most most of them you know they tend to have three you know ex players and things like that in yeah. the thing they are more often than not now including a, w- a woman in there so we are getting a voice but it's not the same no it's not it's not equal in any way shape or form is it and i think it, it comes up in the interview that we have later on in the show but um we we talk about how it it's not equal and it's not seen the same but actually should women's football be seen the same as men's football because let's be honest yes we are different and we should celebrate being different and that people getting on my soapbox people do need to accept that women's sport in general regardless whether it's football or anything they perform differently women perform differently to men and you shouldn't be going to a women's game expecting to see exactly the same as what you would see exactly. in a men's game likewise you shouldn't go to a men's game and expect to see what you would see in a women's game you know? <laughs> no, absolutely in term, in terms of representation it should be the same but yeah it, it, it annoyed me actually because i know a lot that that 20 20 no, 20, yeah, 20 yeah. has been um, wildly panned um, and in some cases rightly so uh, because it does it, it's it's done good and also bad mm. um, so mm. a lot of the women players that we know weren't particularly happy with that because it yeah. does make it look like um, they were playing against a Sunday league. Yeah, like I it think- doesn't show that shouldn't show mm. the talent on it, so it makes it look like it's a mm. bit of a joke because they, there's that bigger yeah. scoreline on it. Yeah. Um, mm. However, mm. there was a lot of people. If you looked at the comments on social media, it was just making me really angry because everyone was just comparing it to the men's game. Like, yeah. oh, Harry Kane would have done that, blah, 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 blah. and there was you know there's a few- makes no difference. It's a different, it's a different it's sport a diff- entirely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women, the way that women play is a different way. Yeah, to they should have been celebrating and blah 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 blah. <laughs> and that. I was like, well actually. I says, yeah, maybe we, they could have re- railed it back a little bit. I don't know, like, yeah, if I rightly think- or wrongly in that one. Mm. But however, they so they don't get the centre stage that often. No, no. So if they want to sit and celebrate and, and bash another goal in and enjoy the crowd, yeah. then you know, fair play to them because they haven't had you know enough time yeah. to do that. If they, you know, they they want to celebrate even even such a little win, yeah. well, not a little win, <laughs> but like uh, then yeah. then celebrate. Like, but don't yeah. compare it to the men's game. Yes, they wouldn't. Have, Harry Kane wouldn't have done that, but Harry Kane's no. not in that game. I think <laughs> coming from sort of a sports background, I I'm not entirely sure that banging in twenty goals 
was the best thing to do. I think, yeah, you've got to make it competitive and you have got to play to the best of your ability. Otherwise, it's max match fixing. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think, you know, it, when I'm encouraging young people to play football, if we were winning by a substantial margin... I'm not sure I would say, come on, you know, keep pushing, keep banging them in. And, and it's almost like mm. you're rubbing it in, isn't it? Like it is a bit of gamesmanship, yeah, 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 yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's have you crossed that line from sportsmanship into gamesmanship? Yeah. So I see where they're coming from in that sense. But I also think what a what a what a celebration. It, it is something massive, this that you know, Latvia aren't a bad side. No. no. <laughs> They're not it's, a bad side. It's, it's just our our team yeah. that are, are better. Are better. <laughs> which is great. Like and it's it's so weird because you you get from from you know, people that are sitting there comparing them. Like it's ridiculous. The, so the damn did the do them, so they don't yeah, really yeah, they they are. Are. Like, yeah. so anyone yeah. who's going to sit there and compare them will be the same people that are slagging off the men's team for not doing well, yeah. <laughs> and they're now slagging off the women's team for yeah. doing well. Yeah. <laughs> you can't win. You like, cannot win. <laughs> like if you're going to compare them, like compare them fairly. Yeah. Like everybody's like, a critic. <laughs> absolutely, but it's it's frustrating because you look at the the. The, the the way that they were portrayed in the media and things like that and and the, everyone was behind them for it like yeah. the men's game for anything like any little bit of a win and the, everything that was on that women's game was just such yeah. a critic yeah. like there wasn't there was barely anyone there were, the majority of the people were the ones slagging them off yeah. it's like it's like when England the guys the men they won ten nil against San Marino so like was the yeah, yeah, where the, were the people the, telling the, them to uh, hold back the, then? The, the, they absolutely <laughs> they blasted there, them, they were, didn't they? They were celebrating. So, it's just, it's nothing to do with the actual team. It's to do with the, I would say, the boards and that. They should not have those teams playing against England because England, obviously, were very developed as a country in terms of producing good players. So they shouldn't be playing, like, part-time players. Like, they should, FIFA shouldn't allow teams like San Marino and the, and the guy in the men's football tournament because it, it's embarrassing for them. Like they're, yeah. they're nowhere yeah. near or, the same standard. As... I'll pitch them against someone that they actually stand a chance yeah. to get, yeah. get, get a little. I mean, they, they won't. Exactly. They wouldn't get through because it, it needs to be fair and yeah. equal. So everyone should get a shot of of doing mm. it. But like, mm. I don't think it it does it doesn't do England any favors to play no. against someone no. who's who's not does their thing because it's not they're not getting challenged. Or risk injury. It, yeah. It's a game it, where do you want to risk injury against? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like that. exactly. It, well for female, you it know. don't give you know San Marino or Latvia a chance no. to actually. A no, game doesn't. that they have a chance of doing anything in either. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't think they like won a game or anything. So what does that prove for them? And you know, it's so you can't blame the women. Like they, they just did what they had to do. They, they were tasked to win the game, and they absolutely obliterated them. But <laughs> yeah, you go to, out, as, as a player, you go out there. There's an f- empty goal. Yeah. yeah, you were not just going to walk past it. You're just going to go out of the stadium, aren't you? Like, take the ball with you. <laughs> You've got to knock it if it's empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. No, there's no one about taking the ball off of you. You sort of got to see it through it. <laughs> you have. Yeah. No, but I must so, say, there's some quality, like, there's amazing athletes out there that are women oh, yeah. as well. They like, are. Amazing. Like, you watch the Olympics and, like, how good are they? Like, some of the swimmers the heptathletes as well, like, extraordinary. And there's no appreciation for that, I don't think, and there should be. Like, that's, some of the women are fantastic. Like, yeah. We need. We just need to start celebrating them on centre stage because that's mm. the problem. The girls, they don't have that, you know, I mean, I don't know if p- kids put posters on walls anymore anyway. Like, <laughs> like I, I feel like that's old news. Um, well, you, you'll know. <laughs> 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 oh no! Does posters still happen. <laughs> posters? Uh, I don't know. Like, really. wait, steps and boys own. Yeah. On that <laughs> I mean, I have a teenager, and she has no posters. No up. posters. No posters. But, but I can't. I can't judge the whole race on one child either. <laughs> um, however, yeah, I don't like. They, they just don't have a someone that they, you know, any yeah. sports star that they really look up to, which is yeah. why. It's just not seen as a career. Like, I mean, you've done a lot of this, haven't you, Hannah, yeah, in terms yeah. of, like, the barriers to girls to sport. Like, you know, it's simple things like um, it's, you don't want to get sweaty, uh, like, yeah, in front yeah. of boys. They don't, you know, bothers about their appearance or they don't want to be over-sexualised in a yeah, way as well. Yeah. Like, Do you know what? It's a good, good point that you've raised, actually, because we're... 
my students are currently studying uh, sports development. They've got an exam in January. Ooh. Ooh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we were actually discussing, you know, if, if they got the case study of having to increase participation for females and a certain age group and things like that, how would they do it? And a lot of them were absolutely stumped because obviously the girls who I teach – they're sporty, so they're already in that environment, so they can't see, well, why would girls not do sport? And then <laughs> the girls who aren't sporty clearly aren't there to give them their opinion. <laughs> so it were us discussing, you know, what are these barriers and what are the what are the things we could do to get more girls involved in sport? And to be fair, the girls that are in, in my lessons were really intrigued by it because they'd not seen that side of things because they are the sporty girls. Yeah, and it yeah. really almost like an I opened a forum that they were like, wow, there's this other side of non-sportiness. And they didn't really know that that, that girls didn't do sport. <laughs> I think um, speaking as a child that wasn't sporty at school yeah. <laughs> and isn't sporty now, like it's ironic where I work, <laughs> but not sporty at all. Like I, I was the I was the kid that was walking cross country at yeah. the back with the teacher on a bicycle behind me going, run, and me going, nope. <laughs> uh, and my daughter isn't sporty she's like me she's a creative person not everyone is the same no, so there no, is that as well exactly. like it's also really it's it's going to get harder because there is a lot more children that are suffering for things like anxiety and stuff yeah. like that yeah, putting yeah, them yeah. in a place of something that they don't feel confident in mm-hmm. it's going to get harder yeah. like i if you're not sporty if you're not fit if you're not running around all the time actually jumping into that so i was awful at running I still am awful mm. at running yeah like and I I know I look awful when I run and when you're mm. a kid and when you're a girl as a teenager yeah you do care about what you look like you really yeah. do it's only 100%. since I've hit 30s that I've, I've really oh, stopped nah. caring <laughs> <laughs> so um, what? Until that point, and, and this isn't to stereotype people because not everyone's no. the same no. um although you are because we're the same person we are the same person so whatever you're gonna say I'm gonna agree with it but like you care about like you you know you worry that like if I go out and run and do netball mm-hmm. and like that like I'm gonna look ridiculous like mm-hmm. I mean I'm gonna look really sweaty like yeah, I'm yeah. gonna look you know I'm gonna look I, I, I run and I look like a fool so yeah. like I don't want to do that in front of people no, like, well, it, do you know what though to, that's a, it's a fair comment that because I was sporty as a child and played basketball to a decent level and I injured my knee and I had to wear a knee brace for quite some time. And I, I didn't want to wear the knee brace mm. because I thought it made me look not athletic and I didn't look like really? I looked at yeah. and, and I didn't wear my knee brace for God knows how long. Um, and now I've got a dodgy knee. And that's a direct effect that I would not do it because I didn't want to be seen as not top of my game and not sporty. And so I suppose yeah. it's like that, that opposite. Very, very much so, yeah. It's- I still had that insecurity of... I can't look like I'm not the part. I can't look like I've got any sort of defective mm-hmm. <laughs> issues or anything like that. I didn't want to wear my knee brace. I refused to wear yeah, it. And yeah. I mean, obviously when you're 15, 16, you don't think long term that come 30, I'm not going to be able to walk properly and I'm going to wear my shoes down on one side more than other because I've got a manky knee. Aww. But, Aww, <laughs> right. you know, but you don't think about these things. Mm. And I suppose long term, coming from, a, you know, if you're a non-sporty person, you don't think long term that when I get to 30, actually by not doing exercise. Yeah, it's really hard um, to get into sport now. It yeah. generally is. Like, I know I have to force myself to go to the gym. I have to force. I mean, I like swimming. That's the only yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, but like, it's it's hard and it's hard because obviously as an adult, I know if I want to get fit, it takes a while. Yeah. It does yeah. take a while. Yeah, like, it does. But as a kid, if you're not fit as a kid, it's just still the same. It takes mm. a while. Like it, it's not easy, yeah. and and but you got more options. It, and it's yeah, but it's, I guess it's, it's motivating there. that child. To actually, you could get fit, and but you know, as a mm. as a you know, you full of anxiety, confidence mm. is an issue when you're yeah, a teenager. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. You don't want to start going to like netball and hockey with all the already sporty, confident yeah, kids yeah. when you know that actually you're going to struggle to run to the other end of the pitch. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> just it's it's hard. So like but, it, there's yeah. all them barriers and coupled with that that there's no media icon driving me yeah. to do that that I want to be yeah. that person either yeah. so I, there's yeah. so many barriers and it's only yeah. getting worse good, yeah. good luck with your job <laughs> <laughs> but I'd say there's two main things there you need an, you need a, a role model so like somebody in the women's game that's gonna spur people on uh, like um, 
What's her, and in the right it, way, not in yeah. the and sensationalised, yeah. look how pretty she is way. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I always look up to people like, for me, it's like Anthony Joshua, I quite like Tyson Fury, like just the way they the way they come from, they're quite humble people. I like the way Joshua still like lives in his flat, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not changed much and that that's the kind of people you need, like just come from like an ordinary background, but they've made like such a big impact to their um kind of society i use that example when i when i had my interview for the foundation um i got asked that question like who's your who's your idol and i said Anthony joshua yeah (laughs) Yeah. charlotte asked me actually who's your idol (laughs) so so i said i said Anthony joshua just because of like his background his like values i don't feel like he he is portrayed in the media as like a bit of a businessman and not really like a, a raw boxer, but I feel like he like train trains his heart out. Like he still puts the effort in and has achieved a lot from nothing. Basically, he went to prison, like, and he got out of prison, and he kind of made himself into a professional boxer. I just think, like, in four years, he was at the Olympics. So I just think that's that's amazing to come from nothing. But the other thing I think there's got to be like supportive environments, more supportive environments. Gyms nowadays. I feel like the commercial gyms, they're like pure gyms and that. You'd never talk to anybody. And I always, I go to a local gym, it's the proper country pumpkin gym. I quite like that, Will, actually. I quite like going to the gym and not talking to anyone and put my headphones (laughs) on. I really want anyone to talk to you. I I, I love, I can't, I could not go to a gym and not talk to someone. Like, I couldn't imagine it. But I always, I always, the gym I go to in Oncastle, it's such a country pumpkin gym that you just talk to anyone and everyone. Like, Give them a shout out, Will. Who are they? Yeah, yeah. The, the gym in Horncastle, guys, the check it one. out. Just one. Yeah. Just, it's just called the, the Gym, but the check, gym. It, check them out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's called The Gym. Check it out on Instagram, uh, social no, media. With them name. Yeah. <laughs> Don't call it The Gym. The g- generic name. But yeah. <laughs> But it's a great place. It's my mecca, so I must admit. Yeah. But the I guys like do a great job. Like local gym. Local it's proper gym, community local feel. People. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah I guess it's with. different for everyone, isn't it? I honestly, there's a lot of people and I know as well, that if someone came talk to me in the gym, I'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'd talk to them and then just stop exercising because I'd be like, oh, let's sit down and have a natter. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we get a cup of tea? <laughs> I like when I go to the gym that there's di- there are different people there. So one of the yeah. things is you always think that it's going to be, and there are some people that are there that are muscly and really oh, God, yeah. but there are other people that are probably unfitter than me as well so i feel like mm, i mm. feel okay like in that yeah. environment so it's not like you always have that that's the thing i guess with kids that they always think if they're going to go and, and look at joining the hockey team and think they don't want to be the worst in there yeah. and it, it's it's taking that step that's really hard so that's what you're saying about role models coming from humble backgrounds is, is absolutely correct yeah. but i think they also need to come from like so for me, I'm I'm not a sporty person. I was a drama person, still I'm a drama person at school. <laughs> but like if there was someone who was similar to me that was creative but also sporty and like yeah, did that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Like rather you know what like when me and you did the cat well started to try and do the cat <laughs> and then damaged ourselves. But we both picked Sarah Millican yeah, to we did. do it, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. Because we didn't want um Joe Wiley, even though she's a lovely person, yeah, yeah. but she's we didn't think we could relate to her because yeah. she's like super into running we wanted someone that maybe wasn't as into running that yeah. would like just be on our level and be like oh you know it's it is really hard it is yeah. really rubbish but yeah. you know mm-hmm. keep going because it might be all right like you know yeah that's who we wanted so you need someone like that for like teenage girls that's like you actually do. this is this is you know it is hard i do get yeah. it yeah. all this kind of stuff is but but if you do it it it's easier like and, and you know like how you've always said will because this is totally your thing in terms of well-being and, all, <laughs> and health and that kind of stuff but little small it's goals and stuff like that to get you there and break it down so it's not so scary yeah. like then yeah. but that just doesn't happen at a school i guess in a way because they've got targets and stuff to reach yeah, like yeah. and and, and yeah. you know the cross country and then they've got to move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next i can thing. just see it now come and join the a team for football or be in the b team for football oh there's the mediocre team if you want to join that like can you imagine <laughs> well they don't have time at school to cross country to get kids into running like they no, don't they just don't, do it it's just it's just you know it's it's, it's freezing cold yeah. i'm asthmatic it's and awful. i feel like i can feel blood yeah. in the back of my throat like 
I hated it. Why is it always in the cold? Yeah, I, I, don't I was understand. literally next to a PE teacher the other day, and I was like, "Why? <laughs> <laughs> why do you do it in the cold? Yeah, why on earth the timetable? There was stuff like that for netball as well. They always used to timetable netball for winter months as well. So then, when you hit ball on end of your fingers, apart from that, absolutely killing Stings. anyway. When Stinging. your fingers are frozen and it practically feels like they've just snapped off, you really don't want to play blooming netball, do you? After that. <laughs> well, they said it was because it's too hot to do it in the summer heat. Summer, I was like, I'm not suggesting you do it in the heat in summer. Spring? Have you had a spring? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lightly <laughs> warm, <laughs> not too warm to ruin it. As much as we complain about English weather, we don't just have winter or boiling hot summer. <laughs> <laughs> we have that in between sogginess. <laughs> this is the place. Yes, we do. Consider spring. Yeah, <laughs> consider spring for your outside sports. It's <laughs> just waiting for you. <laughs> Yeah, I was just glad in there. Like, I think the most important thing to remember is like everyone starts from somewhere. Like, and you know, like people who you think look amazingly fit, like they started from somewhere. So I think, you know, it it didn't just happen overnight. Like, unless you're taking performance enhancing drugs, but I hope you're not taking them. No. So you're not taking they them. Play on the drugs, but, mate. Uh, we don't want that. But um, I think, like. I think people get uh, probably a bit obsessed with like targets and stuff. And it's just like about staying in your own kind of lane. And uh, this goes for anything. Like I think even students at foundation, like stay in your own lane and do what you need to do. I think that's the most important thing that can go out. I think I said that probably last time, but just be set your own goals and then you won't get, I think people kind of maybe compare themselves maybe a bit too much to other people. And then they, that's what creates the demotivation for kind of, go to gym because they don't think they're good enough or whatever but then yeah. they are good enough like the f- but the fact that you're actually trying to do something is you put the wheels in motion don't you so i think just sticking your own lane i'd say to anyone really yeah that's a beautiful thought to end that on really happy to welcome Maria Ryder who is the chair of the Lady Imps Supporters Association and also is very heavily involved in Lincoln City Women to talk more about the ban. So let's kick off there then uh, with uh, with the Lady Imps. Uh, what inspired you to start that then? <laughs> Uh, so I was new to football uh, and never had anything to do with football uh, throughout my life. Didn't grow up watching it, had no family members that were interested. And um, my son showed a bit of interest in football, took him to a few Lincoln City games when he was little, but it was awful and we didn't know anybody. So it was a fairly miserable experience. And um, fast forward to the age of, you know, he was like 12 or 13 or something. I had a new partner who was really interested in football and we started going and I got the bug and I wrote a Facebook post about how it was making me feel and lots of people said, oh yeah, okay. There's, you know, lots of women were kind of getting in touch and, you know, the banter science weren't something that I was comfortable um, writing on or engaging with at the time. So I set up a Facebook page and it kind of grew from there. And so we've held social events and fundraising events and we try and support the club in lots of different ways. But we're not just about supporting women. We have a much kind of broader reach now in terms of diversity and inclusion um, and trying to welcome everybody to the to the club. So, yeah. Yes, uh, it in just, a nutshell. <laughs> you just started Match Day Welcomes, haven't you? Um, which is uh, something that's quite amazing. I thought um, it'd be a good chance for you to talk about that, really, as well, because um, it's, a, it's a fantastic opportunity for lots of people to get involved in and nominate people, isn't it? Absolutely. So the idea was that um, supporters... Uh, did some fundraising. We bought some season ticket seats at Lincoln City and the club have matched uh, the amount that we could buy. And it means that people from underrepresented groups or hard to reach groups, minorities, people who think that football is not for them. uh, We say, come and give it a try. Come and experience the atmosphere. Uh, Come and experience a match day. Uh, We'll make you very well. Welcome. So hence, hashtag Imps Match Day welcome. And, um, and we'd love to have nominations from people that have never been to a game before and who are from those kind of hard to reach uh, underrepresented groups to show that we are a welcoming club. Uh, and so it's supporter driven, uh, supported and matched by the club, which is excellent. So uh, you can email um, matchdaywelcome at redimps.com. That's, a, that's great memory there. <laughs> hoping that I've got that right. 
Well, if not, um, your website is... is uh, it's ladyimps.com. Yeah, I was going to say, it's quite Lady easy to remember. <laughs> oh, that's la- ladyimps.co.uk. Stick, a, stick Lady Imps in Google and, uh, and you'll find us. Fabulous. Um, so I guess on to Lincoln City Women because we, we want to talk uh, a lot about women football, especially with the uh, yep. with the ban and stuff. Um, they're doing very well right now, aren't they? Uh, Lincoln City Women. Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln City Women at the top of the league. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a game in hand or so on some of the teams that are running up behind us. Uh, we're meeting our uh, it'll be a top of the table clash towards the end of December on the nineteenth against Boldmere. So hoping that match goes ahead uh, with the weather and things that we've been having recently. Um, but yeah, they've been they've been doing really, really well. So we're very proud of them. I was just going to sort of ask about um, the impact that you feel that maybe the ban had and how much Lincoln City women have grown over the last couple of years. Because I think they've sort of just gone into the stratosphere over the last couple of years that it's really taken off. Whereas before, women's sport in general sort of festered, if you like, in sort of that middle ground, isn't it? And all of a sudden it's taken off. And what you think that, that has has caused that and impacted that? Okay, so the ban on women playing football in, in 1921 was huge, catastrophic for, for women's sport in general, catastrophic for women's football. Um, you know, it was a hugely poor decision by a group of men uh, that just didn't want women to be successful. Uh, the game was huge, the spectator numbers were huge, money raised for charities huge, and they just cut it off completely. So, yes, devastating. Uh, and the fact that that ban lasted for 50 years is outrageous. Um, outrageous, so yeah. 1971, you think we'd know better way before then. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, it's just just outside of my lifetime, but not by much. And so, um, yeah, it's it, it halted the development of the women's game massively so we're almost 100 years behind the men's game so yes it's had a huge impact um lincoln city ladies uh, was the first kind of incarnation of women's kind of football at a, a good level um but that again found its demise in in 2012 so we were, we were lincoln city been without a kind of premier women's team if you like um and so they were only reformed in 2019 and of course we've had a pandemic which has had a huge impact so you haven't heard about much about Lincoln City women if you know you're not kind of directly involved maybe or you're not already a supporter because the pandemic has meant that matches have been curtailed so we're only really at the kind of start of a full proper season you know fingers crossed that we can complete the season looking at what's happening so so it needs all the support it can get uh, it, we need supporters to come and, and watch the games at Moorlands, which is just off Newark Road, generally on a Sunday at two. But, you know, the, the the fixtures are few and far between. So, again, you need to go onto the Lincoln City Women website to, to make sure that the, the games are on and follow follow it on social media um, around kickoffs, delays, weather curtailments, etc. But um, but other than that, yeah, we'd love to see you. It's only four pounds to enter if you're an adult and a pound for a child. So, you know, really affordable way to, to see our football. Absolutely. Um, how many sort of uh, people do you gen- generally tend to see down there right now then? So, again, given it's a new it's a new venue for the club, uh, so, so we've only been using Moreland since uh, sort of August, September time. Um, and so we'll get maybe 100, but we obviously there is capacity for many, many more. We've got covered seating. There's usually hot snacks available. Um, you know, you can get up close to to the to the pitch you know and see the the play really close up it's a good good standard of football it's very different from the men's game so don't expect uh you know an exact replica it's a very different animal but but it's a it's a really good community feeling very welcoming warm really good way to introduce families to football uh, for example or if you've got girls who are who are playing for fun or playing as part of a club then absolutely get them down to see the you know where you can get to within Lincolnshire um you know Lincoln City women are the highest placed women's team in the county so come and see what they can do fantastic there's one thing I did want to ask you through because I know you need to go soon um one of the things that uh, myself and Amy who's the who's captain of Lincoln City women have been doing is uh is going around schools talking to to girls about 
getting into sport and I know it's something Hannah herself is really passionate about as a as a head of education and employability um that there seems to be that barrier to girls in sport so it's it's either that it, they they don't want to play after a certain age or they don't um even you know you've got loads of boys out there that aspire to be footballers but you don't tend to find a lot of girls that aspire to be footballers why do you think that is so historically, going back to the ban, there's been those lack of role models. Uh, the fact that the you know women's football, adult women's football, is treated as a grassroots sport, so it's it's kind of alongside the children. Um, you know that's where it's placed at the moment. So that's a huge issue. Um, yeah, sure. But things like the the the, the Barclays sponsorship of the WSL, uh, the broadcast. Um, uh, deals that are being done and the fact that women's football is now being played on, you know, on the major sports channels um, and people can see it, that's all going to help with looking at uh, the girls to kind of look up towards and say, yes, I can do it. Being fit, being active is something, you know, to be proud of, something to aim for, something to achieve. And even if it is just for fun, that doesn't matter. Um, but yes, having those visible role models is is absolutely key. 100% agree 100% agree I think you know it's it's definitely improved over the last few years just in sport in general that we're seeing a lot more females coming into these science subjects and I will say that I'm on my soapbox again that sport is a science <laughs> um, but I think girls also don't realize how many other job roles there are that you know if you're not the top footballer it's okay because there's lots of other roles in there as well and it's not a lesser role um you know, but I think going back to what you said about it not being equal to the men's game, that's one of my pet peeves is that people always compare women's football to men's football and things like that. And it's like, no, it's two completely different games. And that's the whole point in going to see men's football and women's football is to get a different perspective on things. You know, we don't compare men's gymnastics to women's gymnastics because men do power events and women do the artistic events. You know, there's, there's differences. We are different beings. And uh, yeah, I think you you hit that sort of nail on the head there, saying that there's it's different. It is different, and we should celebrate that difference. Exactly, celebrate the difference. Don't it, don't don't compare apples and pears, as they say. Um, <laughs> and 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 it's really good. You know, good women's football is at, good women's football is as good as men's football. It's just different. Agreed. Yeah, definitely. Well, well, fantastic. So before we let you go, uh, let's have a little bit of a recap. Where can people find information about both uh, Lady Imps and Lindsay Withers? So you can follow both on Twitter. So it's at Lady Imps, uh, at Lincoln underscore women. You'll find that on Twitter. Uh, websites, ladyimps.co.uk, uh, lincolncitywomen.co.uk. Um, and uh, yeah, just cruise around social media, do a Google search, you, you will find us. Uh, and don't hesitate to to drop a, um, a direct message or an email or whatever it is. If you want any information, we will get it to you somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make sure we put all those links and stuff in the podcast description as well. So you don't have to find, you can get rid of that pen and paper, guys. Um, you just click on the thing. So it will all be good. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mary. It's been really nice to have uh, that, that perspective um, yeah. elsewhere as well. So it's great. <laughs> It was the vibrating plates. It was the vibrating plates and the bum checking fat thing. Yeah. Okay, so we're moving on from that one to something that I think a lot of people will remember because um, this this fad has actually made a return to our screens. Um, mm-hmm. And we've done a little bit of research. Get us, we're prepared. Um, yeah, we are prepared. <laughs> we did a little bit of research and they've actually gone online as well now. Um, so do we remember back in the day our lycra, lycra clad friend uh mr motivator oh yes yeah oh <laughs> I was, yes i was waiting for will's reaction because i don't know if you're too young. i think i know who i think i know who you mean um, Think, think, I think. think. Oh, no, Mr. Motivator. He used to be on GMTV uh, back in the day. Will is definitely too young it to is, GMTV. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and he used to do like a 20-minute segment, didn't he? I always remember it used to be on first thing on a morning on good old daytime telly. And it, it was almost like an aerobic session, like, a, a you know, a step-a-size session and stuff like that. And he'd be... He'd, 
get so giddy and so oh, yeah, into yeah. it, did Mr. Motorway. But his, his outfits were probably the thing that made people want to watch him. I think you probably just sat there looking at his outfit more than you did actually doing the exercise. <laughs> um, so, he was just such a lovely guy, wasn't he? Was he? Such a lovely he, was, guy. he was basically like a, a less toned down version of Will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did it, was this the guy who, like, when we went into lockdown, because they were talking about like virtual exercise and everything, he came out yeah. or something and like. He probably did. I he think was he like did. the one that everyone kept on like making a comparison to like this is going to be your virtual Joe Wicks exercises but like this yeah, was yeah this so guy. he is yeah. the old school Joe Wicks oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he is where Joe Wicks got all his ideas from yeah, yeah. and then he did <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah he used to stand up in studio and start doing his step step <laughs> step didn't he um, but he was really positive about it he was, yeah. he was, he was like come on guys you can yeah. do this he was just he's like he was just a ball of energy. It was. It was. He still is a step. ball of energy. He still is because yeah, he's still going. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to talk about the fad of of that, which leads us into good old DVDs, VHSs, um, and daytime telly exercise classes. Because a lot of these classes, and you'll know what I'm on about, Will, because you're the exercise mm-hmm. guy. Uh, but they address a lot of different areas of fitness, don't they? That you know, it's it's almost like doing what we would call a, a boot camp or a circuit Absolutely, nowadays, because yeah, yeah, yeah. um, we don't necessarily do these step classes anymore. <laughs> the, the aerobics classes don't really exist anymore. It tends to just be a, a I think it's progressed now, and to into a boot camp or a circuit class. Yeah, it's more like like say circuits, and then you've got like I feel like it's more kind of Pilates is getting big now. Like, as in those sort, that sort of exercise, which I quite like to see. I like to hear that people are doing yoga as well and stuff like that, because I feel that's that's something that should be done. But no, but... so I um I used to do those. Like my mum had a Jane Fonda one. <laughs> we did it together. Like I, looked, I, I I can still remember a lot of it because there was like she was at the front in a eighties like yeah. leotard with leggings and uh, leg warmers and stuff like that. Well, that's what Mister And, I and there was like there was a, there was a bid bearded guy at the back that like yeah. that, that she was like oh see how he's and they're all like they're having fun and they're yeah. like ah, we're the big <laughs> and then there's always nobody that, has that much fun there was always that. that no there was no sweat that was no. confusing no one was ever sweating um but they they were there was always that one where they were lying on the lying on the floor sideways with the leg going out oh, like oh yeah crunch it now go oh, crunch it. it was a little bit you know um I, sexy in places yeah I don't understand. so remember you can answer this world why why on fitness videos Mm. or in these kinds of sessions i'm not saying they do it in gyms anymore for your circuits and your boot camps but why in the videos did we have that kind of yeah squat (sighs) work it i really why have that kind of voice (laughs) i I don't really know that it must be because they're i don't know motivating themselves i guess Uh, (laughs) think about the interview process like if you can just tell us how to squat in your most seductive (laughs) voice it was like delia smith but yeah yeah, for exercise. Yeah. I must say that. Meet like, and <laughs> Meet they also had, um, they also had um, such and such in the back is going to, if you're struggling, such yeah. and such in the back will do the easier version. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of felt pressured into not doing the easier version. I know. I know. Nobody could see you because it's in your living room. I never did the easier version because I felt like she could. I'm like, no. And I always felt like I'd achieve, like, ha, ha, ha. I did the advanced version. <laughs> like, Shane and Mr. Motivator are going to be proud of me because yeah, I did yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you and just it, like wind it on if you hate it it's like yeah. shut it's up now <laughs> I've got really brief memories of backing track in the background but I just can't remember what it was it was something like you got to work <laughs> I can't remember oh, it's, just, it's just a fragment in my mind I can't remember but it was the most ridiculous soundtrack in the background yeah quite probably yeah oh, I, I hope my mum still has that DVD actually I, know, I think that, we should well, do it we should VHS. definitely do it yeah VHS we need to find a VHS I'll tell you what but doing virtual classes is probably one of the hardest things I've ever done like, I yeah. had to do it during COVID and it's weird like you yeah. feel like you, you're like oozing energy out but then you're not getting like a 
a, a yeah. kind of like a response and then like <laughs> you're on you're on i was on teams doing it and like i'm like he's still there guys are you okay you breathing all right like, I just, <laughs> it's, it's the weirdest thing and they, i think they probably actually did those voices to kind of psych themselves up they must have yeah. done they must have done because it's actually keeping your focus is really hard whereas like if you're in yeah. a room with people it's like you can read their body language you actually get a response out of people but yeah there's I mean, nothing. That, that's like me. It's a highlight, isn't it? Like the highlight of delivering an exercise class. Yeah. Is having your participants smiling back at you, joking back at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my participants you. So I'm going to get some of my participants on this show so that they can tell you yeah. how fantastic I was. <laughs> and I definitely didn't torture them in any way. Are we going to call that segment <laughs> Massage Hannah's <laughs> Ego? <laughs> And now on Massage Hannah's Ego, we have an ex participant till now amazing achievement. Can we all get that? I've got to give myself a pat on back somewhere. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> well, that was exercise fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, on to local news. L O C A L. Now, for those, for those of you that um, uh, we didn't get to discuss this last week because I hadn't made the jingle, <laughs> um, but I did in the in the edit. So um, my son Harry stars in that yes. for the intro. Nice. I didn't just put a kid voice on. He's uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he loved it. He went around the whole house afterwards, going "local news, the good news," <laughs> like a catchphrase. So um, I've just got this horrible vision of you running down the street, attacking kids, going "say local news." <laughs> <laughs> no, he was my own kid. Um, Audition so, for this local news. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I've been trolling the local news sites for something that um, isn't too heavy because there's a lot of heavy news out there right now. Obviously, um, COVID's happening and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And but this isn't the place for that conversation. We are a local local podcast for local people. <laughs> so um, I wanted something just a little bit more lighter. That was yeah. just a little bit. Um, less heavy and, and more fun. So we've gone for yay! The Lincoln Christmas Market is happening. Yeah. <laughs> but when this podcast goes out, it'll be nearly over. So go and get yourself some bargains. Well, apparently, <laughs> local people tell us Sunday mm. is the day to go. So if you yeah. haven't been Ooh. yet, because that's when all the prices are slashed. Yeah. Um, really? So people trying to sell out before they leave. So if you haven't been and you really do want to go, wear a mask. Um, but yeah. also go on a Sunday because apparently that's the best time to go um, but yes in the local news sites he was talking about obviously there was a potential that it wasn't going to go ahead because of rising cases and stuff but it is how exciting yeah. also in, also the, uh, the the train strike nearly also stopped it happening <laughs> because the train strike was going to happen but the East Midlands train people have decided that they won't strike over the Christmas market so that's happening yeah. so it's a bit like I feel like they should make a film about the Lincoln yeah. Christmas market <laughs> like all this adversity like go and finally the here yeah, it's happening. It's exciting. I mean, I've personally never been, but I'm told it's great. I've been. Oh, it's great. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. good. I yeah. went. I went the. Were it the year when we had all that snow and only like ten stalls turned up, but it was still actually really, really good. <laughs> uh, I did actually really enjoy it, and it it is good because it's set in Lincoln. Mm. Like it's not just in a random field. Like it's actually set in Lincoln Centre, isn't it? And yes. you're, you're, you're like amongst the cathedral and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it, it, mm-hmm. it's got a proper Christmas feel about it. Yes, like, it's it sprinkled with a little bit of mixed spice and cinnamon. <laughs> well, Lincoln is quite a magical like we yeah, were walking around really night the other night, weren't we? Yeah. And it is such it is quite a, a place. We're not just lend- random as walking around, we were actually out for a meal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it does lend itself to Christmas very well, it does though, doesn't it? Because yeah. it's got like the old yeah. cobbled streets and yeah, that kind of like traditional it. vibe that is very, you know, Christmassy. Yeah. So and that's what makes it. I imagine it is good. I, I the only reason I haven't been is because I don't like people. <laughs> um, <laughs> crowds. I don't like crowds. So I went to one in Leeds. We went, when my friend yeah. lived in Leeds, we went oh. to one in Leeds. And it, it I was massively hemmed in, like to yeah. the point I had a baby in a sling and it was Harry when he was a little baby. And like you, you spent so long queuing yeah, and, and yeah. stuff like that. So I'm not like I like the more little localer ones, but yeah. like I've not been to Link it because I'm concerned there's just gonna be COVID. <laughs> well, no, he's, he's, he's literally this is before COVID. Like, it, I just don't like the feeling of being like cast mm. like, yeah, yeah, like I went to York well, Christmas market last week and it was really crowded. And then right. I felt like people were attached to me, like they were just yeah. in my face. And it was oh, snowing it's... as well at the same time. Yeah, I just like my space. Oh. <laughs> I, I was just like, just get away from me. Like, <laughs> come on. I know I'm like a motivator, but I don't need you near me. 
<laughs> I've got a weekend off. I don't want it now. <laughs> you know? Real, tell us a well-being tip. Yeah. <laughs> no more. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I just want to eat my German hot dog and just be gone now. That's, I, like, no. I like space to browse my purchases. I yeah. like to, I don't want to have to queue for like an hour yeah. to eat something. Like Maybe that's it. Maybe all three of us need to go to the Christmas market, but we'll get some some of them hula hoops from work <laughs> and we can walk around like godrums and if anybody bounces into them, yeah, we can bounce off the hula hoop like this is our personal space I mean everyone is different so I know people go because they like that element of it they like being around other yeah. people and all that kind of joy so mm. everyone is totally different I'm just not a fan mm. of the crowd so yeah. I I will actively avoid the big scale events for that reason yeah Mm-hmm. Oh well, but well, please go, people. <laughs> On a sun- to be fair, Sunday I think it's all supposed to be less busier. Yeah, the yeah, prices yeah, are yeah. faster. Sunday, if I were going to go, which I have no money, so I can't go. Yeah. Um, but if I had, if I had some money. <laughs> <laughs> I would go on a Sunday. Yeah. So that's that's my top tip from the local people. Awesome. <laughs> go on a Sunday. I've now I've ruined it for everyone because everyone will go on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In which case, go on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the long Next. bit. I'm going on Sunday. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can feed back. Tell us. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Yeah, let us know. Compare it to York and see how I many people do. get into your personal space per square meter. Can you eat? Can you eat your German hot dog in peace? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to shout me down for a well-being tip. <laughs> the satisfaction of eating your German hot dog with people. Great tip. <laughs> if you do bump into Will at the well-being market, at the, at the uh, Lincoln Christmas market, I, what I do want you to do is shout, give us a well-being tip, Will. Yeah. Just, uh, just so we know that you're a podcast listener. <laughs> <laughs> just run to the car. I'm going now. I'm all in for an autograph. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so just before we go, we wanted to talk to you uh, just briefly about our Christmas video because I went really hard on it. <laughs> yeah, you did. Bravo. It's um, good. So if you've not seen it yet, um, look us up on YouTube or one of our Facebook cha- book channels. It's in fact just on all of our social media. So just drop buy on one of them and you'll yeah. see it somewhere because it's pinned to the top if you want to drop us a donation that'd be great um, <laughs> <laughs> however what we did with the Christmas video this year I love doing charity Christmas videos it's yeah. like one of my favourite things to do like it just it's just nice getting that emotive message I like the whole storytelling element but what we wanted to do this year is talk about loneliness and that's something that we are talking about across the month as well and what we wanted to do is highlight people's stories that aren't necessarily highlighted Mm. so when you think loneliness you do tend to think of maybe an older person stuff like that and that was featured in it um because it is important to tell that story as well however we did feature some that you don't necessarily think about so we featured the divorced dad yeah so it featured someone who Mm. is dropping their kids off at their mums and looking at spending christmas on the on their own i personally know a few people that that they are doing that for the first Mm. time this year and actually you don't really think about that as when you're thinking about loneliness you don't think about someone who's newly separated and they're away from their kids because actually that is awful like Mm. the people i know are really struggling with the fact that they're not with their kids at christmas um and um we also featured someone who's just been recently bereaved facing their first Christmas alone and again yeah. that's something that's a message that's very close to my heart um it, recently and I think again a story that doesn't necessarily get told so I'm, I'm not aiming to depress you at the end of this podcast <laughs> um because the message in the video was very much encouraging people to give a little love at Christmas and reach out to those people so I guess my heartfelt message to you guys if you're listening to this is if you know someone and they don't necessarily have to be close or a family member or something like that you might just know someone who's recently separated or recently bereaved or something like that 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 doesn't know what to do with themselves at christmas and um reach out to them they might have a plan and they might not so you don't know unless you ask but you know invite them around for a couple of drinks like you don't necessarily have to invite them around for the whole day you're yeah. for christmas but like see what they're doing in the evening like i mean it'd be great mm-hmm. if you would invite them over for christmas dinner um it but, would yeah just make sure they don't bring like 
their entire life with them and they move in and then that's it. <laughs> that's true. Because that is what, that's what relatives do at Christmas. <laughs> they use it as an opportunity to slyly move in. <laughs> no, yeah, invite them over for, you know, Christmas Eve, something like that. Like, you know, yeah. see what they're doing. Like, give them something to look forward to, like, mm-hmm. in the season. It's, it's not, it, and if, if you can't invite them over, there's a thing, like, then drop them a message, give them yeah. a call. Like, you just let them know that they've got someone to talk to on the day. Drop them a present round, like, just something yeah. as simple as that. Like I, some people I know that are recently separated off, you know, and it's, that's difficult, even mm. if you've not got kids, because you know, who's, who's buying them a present at Christmas? It's just something yeah, as simple yeah. as that. Like everyone looks forward to opening a present from their like nearest and dearest yeah. or something like that. But if they're on their own this year for Christmas at the first time, they might not even have bothered putting a Christmas tree up. They yeah. might not have done, you know, something like that. And actually just you know, leaving a little Christmas present at like that doll will give them like just so give much... them a new tradition that they can. Yeah. Something oh, new to look yeah. forward to. Yeah, make, you know, something that's different for them so that's our plea and yes. um, uh, let's all look after each other and give a little love this christmas yay yep so to finish us off as always because we always like to finish off on a beautiful well-being high <laughs> <laughs> over to the celebrity legend yeah that is <laughs> we will how can we feel joyous this week Year, month, forever in our lives. Festive season. <laughs> There's the one. Thanks very much. Oh, oh, I'm just going to get all these people off me, you know, from the market. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I think a tip. I was thinking about this, and it's. I think just because we're going into a new year, so we're going into 2022. I think my well-being tip would be centered around resolutions and goals, um, but making, but like it's difficult with goals because it's it's having a goal that's like going to make you feel happy as well so you know it could be going for more walks in the day it might be for drinking more water in the day um maybe sacrificing something as well that you're used to and then like going a little bit outside your comfort zone and trying something out so it might be going to the gym for the first time but it might be the best thing you ever do or it might be trying netball out for the first time, or it might be going to participate in one of our programmes at the <laughs> oh, foundation. Yeah, that. <laughs> no, we, want, we want people to do that. Um, <laughs> but I would I would say like a wellbeing tip is like to try something that you you really want to try but you never tried before, and like just give it a go. I, I, I just think it's it might trigger something and it might actually be the best thing you ever do in your life so you exactly. know and if it's not for you it might just give you a really funny story to tell the people <laughs> exactly 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 well, well, note for life Go. never know unless you try <laughs> there's, there's a win-win in, in that well-being tip you know so yeah, exactly <laughs> absolutely well thank you very much for that i guess now there's nothing else to say but other than thanks very much for listening yeah. and thank join you. us again next time i'm not going to put a time in it now because actually these these podcasts have been so ad hoc um, <laughs> because the, where, when we can and can't fit them in so um instead of it being a, a regular item that occurs just yeah. enjoy it when it appears in your Box. notifications yeah. um, which that won't happen unless you subscribe so do that <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm please subscribe <laughs> take care guys Merry Christmas <laughs>